from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London for HPE Discover, a special presentation of theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm Joe my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Brent Allen, Group Manager, Vertical Solutions with HPC and Big Data, part of HP Enterprise Servers. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. CUBE yeah. alumni, good new role. Good to see you guys. Yes, absolutely. So the last time I was talking to you guys, we were talking about converged systems and uh, you know, been, was doing that for a while around virtualization and cloud. Um, Great opportunity for me, personally. We've seen this merging of uh, high performance computing and big data coming together in the marketplace, and so uh, I was very excited about this opportunity to start up a brand new area inside of our uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Apollo segment, part of our converged uh, servers area. So, um, so talk about the new role. Uh, yep, brand new, brand new role, brand new team, um, and it's spawning off of um, this uh, high performance computing alliance initiative that we signed with Intel. Uh, back in the June time frame, you guys uh, may remember that. We've had a couple of developments and updates along the way. Um, some great stuff happening even back at uh, Supercube Computing uh, back last month. And um, we've set up these uh, centers of excellence across the world, starting with uh, Grenoble uh, in Europe and then also Houston um, there in, uh, in the U.S. And it's really a, a couple of parts to this uh, al alliance. We're, working with very specific industry leaders around a couple of different uh, industries, looking at oil and gas, financial services, um, and healthcare and life science, uh, to go out and tackle some of the really big and daunting problems that many of these customers have um, by bringing together high performance computing and big data, looking at not only cost optimization, but how do we optimize performance. Um, and so, HP, we're bringing to bear a lot of our technical expertise in the area. In fact, we've even onboarded uh, net new folks from these various industries that have a very extensive background in engineering and those uh, capabilities there. And um, from the Intel side, Intel is bringing in a lot of their new technologies, so uh, their open path architecture, some of their new advancements around Phi. We're looking at uh, new advancements in non-volatile memory, um, a variety of different things to help these customers optimize uh, their environments, um, taking advantage of things like uh, next steps around Lustre, for example, as well, um, inside of the HPC. So vertical space. focus, that's a big part of big data, having a vertical domain expertise, it, it high is. performance, a lot of compute involved in a lot of these areas. Is that Absolutely. part of the rationale? Absolutely, so the thought is that rather than creating these generalized structures that we try and take to market, we work with very specific customers that are you know, leading edge, if you will, um, and help them to evolve the next generation of infrastructure jointly to be able to solve their specific problems. We then work with them to, to take that and roll that into a more generic uh, reference architecture that we can bring out to a larger population within the industry vertical. Um, so far, it's uh, you know, gaining a lot of traction. We've got a lot of interest from some really major players. Hopefully next time uh, we're together, I'll be able to have some of them here with me and we can call some of them out by name, but you can see some of them yeah, yeah. even around uh, the floor out here at Discover. So organization around solutions seems to be the, the theme. Absolutely. What's the objective of the group? Help customers migrate to the cloud? Is it more app development? Yeah, all well, of the above? so we take a very consultative approach. Um, we believe that it's the right way, especially as we're making forays into these new areas of technology. Um, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot that's unknown, and so there's um, a lot of code optimization that likely needs to happen, um, understanding workflows and helping to optimize those things. So we're taking a, um, a, again, a slightly different approach than just being an infrastructure provider, if you will. Um, we actually bring the customers on site, or we go to their site with our engineering teams. Um, the, the customer engineers, as well as our own, work side by side in evolving their stack um, and ensuring that the end result is an optimized solution end to end. So Brent, I wonder if you could talk about the sort of intersection between HPC and, and big data. Sure. Big data, the whole meme kind of became a tailwind for HPC. Yes. Yeah, the hardcore HPC people will you know, give you the, the line of big data, big deal. I've been doing this forever. So what are the similarities, what are the, what are the differences if there are any? Well, and it really boils down to the actual uh, workflow and the particular um, 
applications that the customer's trying to run. So, so the, the, um, what they're trying to actually digest. Um, in the case of uh, many of these environments, we're seeing what is being referred to as high performance data analytics, where um, in order to get to the next level, if you take, for example, visualization, say, let, let's use oil and gas, right? So if you're looking at um, seismic information, in order to get to the next level of um, rendering a 3D image in more detail, you need more data going into that model. So they're taking larger sets of data and being able to digest that into uh, you know, richer model configurations from moving from 2D to 3D, where we have been, from 3D into 4D, where it's bringing in time lapse as well. Um, this is also true in uh, genomics, so a lot of the genomics research. Um, right now, it's, you know, um, for doing a, a, a sequence on a genome, it's approximately a terabyte of data that gets generated. If we look at cancer, for example, um, inside of the United States alone, there are uh, 13 million uh, cancer patients. So um, one of the objectives is taking and cataloging the genomes for all of those people. So 13 million terabytes, um, you know, you can kind of walk down the line and you end up with, you know, a, a, a significant amount of data that's being generated. So the solutions that you're creating, can you talk a little bit more about them? Sort of what are they? How do they relate to, you know, the sort of HPC side of, of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Sure. So, I mean, from a um, from a hardware perspective, we're utilizing um, the advancements and advantages that we've uh, been able to pull together within the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Apollo line, where we've actually taken um, compute platforms um, on the HPC side and we focus them for specific development of high-performance computing environments um, that are x86 based and um, that are both cost optimized, but also performance optimized. Um, and we, ha we bring in a number of different accelerator type technologies inside of that environment as well, whether that's coming from you know, working with NVIDIA around bringing in GPUs and customers that may have optimized for a CUDA base, or um, bringing in things like uh, Phi type technology with Intel, bring those into the environment to help further accelerate the environment. That's then often paired with um, the advancements that we've made around um, uh, storage-based server platforms so that really are geared more toward the big data element. Um, if you look at our 4,000 uh, line of servers, it really is storage focused. Um, we're there working, uh, in addition to just being able to help um, provide a storage platform for the HPC side, we're working with a number of companies as partners like Scality and Eternity to be able to create archives where a lot of that resident information lives. Um, big focus on being able to have object archives um, available to be used as a part of the overall environment. So, separately these things can be digested as HPC and big data, um, but quite often what we're finding is that in actuality as they're being run, it's starting to merge closer and closer together. So when I say um, uh, HPDA, high performance data analytics, I'm not necessarily saying there's you know, one system that we implement that does both. Um, quite often these are two elements inside of an overall architecture that need to be able to work together as a seamless whole. Okay, and so your job as a chef, pull together different solutions across That's HP, right. but, but within a big data rubric? Uh, well, uh, it, across both big data and HPC. And so we have some solutions that are specifically HPC focused. Uh, for example, if we look at um, the healthcare and life sciences arena, um, we're working uh, on one particular project um, that is specifically taking um, genomic sequencing to the next level around building a next gen uh, genomic sequencing platform which is very much focused on HPC. It's very much focused on how do you take um, the, uh, the work stream and be able to pull that together as much as possible, ensure that performance is staying at a high utilization level where we can do more of these genomic sequences faster than ever before. Um, on the other side of that, um, we're also working with a number of um, institutions um, that have access, for example, um, to these uh, government um, locations where a lot of genomic data, data currently exists. Um, in, in the US, for example, uh, there's the um, health organization that holds all of those pieces. There are a number of uh, universities that have access to that. They're taking those, pulling those, um, you know, pulling that genomic data into a cloud base uh, to create a centralized genomic hub where multiple organizations and institutions can then um, 
you know, come in and grab the information that they need in order to do the next level of sequencing inside of their own environment. A lot of this stuff is being done for research, and then they um, contribute that back to the overall cloud. So there's a genomic cloud element there as well. We're working on a specific solution with a couple of different customers uh, for that. Um, we also do some things that are more enablement outside of just uh, traditional HPC and big data. We're working on a number of visualization solutions, remote visualization. Um, there are a number of healthcare providers as well as researchers um, that have been asking for a standardized uh, remote visualization solution for a long time to be able to manipulate uh, 3D models of genetic uh, and genomic data. Um, the same thing is true um, inside of oil and gas where you've got engineers that may be going to a platform um, out in the North Sea or out in the Gulf um, and wanting to be able to look at you know, the seismic uh, formation, the reservoir in a 3D model and be able to manipulate that and potentially even be able to work with other people in a um, you know, sort of a sharing model across the globe. How do technology partners fit into this? You mentioned visualization a couple of times. Is that something yeah. they HP provides, are you working with partners like Click or others? Or? We're working with a number of folks. In that particular case, um, we're working with Altair, we'll, we're working with um, Nice, we're working with um, our own, uh, well, not, not our own anymore, it's now HP Inc., <laughs> but uh -huh. RGS, uh -huh. um, right? Uh -huh. So there are a number of different providers. Our feeling is that um, the architecture, when we're looking at this and working through how it needs to be built out, there are similarities between these software packages in that we can provide a um, infrastructure architecture that will be pretty much the same between the software, uh, different, different software providers, and then we offer options for these different things. Now we do end-to-end -end testing and certification of these systems with these different ISVs, um, so we have you know, that level of confidence and we're also working with a number of customers to deploy these things in real world scenarios. Um, and that's the difference as well here versus some of the other things that I've worked on and talked to you guys about in the past is we're starting with the collaborations so that we have Lighthouse customers and public references as the basis for taking these solutions to market, these reference architectures. We believe that that's incredibly important in areas such as HPC and big data, um, where a lot of tuning and expertise really is required to, to come to bear. So public references that you can share with us on theCUBE, or is these sort of general public, examples? Or? Public references, um, it, that I'll be able to share with you guys very shortly. <laughs> okay. We're just now getting this group right, off cool. the ground. But we are working with um, a number of companies that have already agreed to be public uh, are, are today. There, are there, um, is there a grand challenge in this space, right? The high performance computing is always the, you know, the smartest, the, the, the hairiest, most gnarly problems. Is right. there a grand challenge that they're looking toward, you know, maybe not like 20 years out, not 10 years out, but within the next you know, two, two to three years, right. that you can see the horizon that they're going to be able to solve. In other words, you kind of went through a big data 1.0, then you started to see the HPC right. thing come together. Right. What do you, what do you see in sort of the, the near term, big challenge that your customers are asking for that you're going to be able to address in the next, say, 24 to 36 months? Well, th there are a number of keys here. One, I mean, um, years ago I was, uh, I did a lot in HPC, and at the time, um, everybody was very focused on the top end supercomputers, and there are still some companies out there that are. Um, the majority of people that we work with that are tier one companies across a number of different verticals are really looking not um, necessarily to build the, you know, the most extreme supercomputer, they're looking to figure out how they can get a similar level of performance but cost optimized, so there is a budgetary element here, but as far as um, where they're looking to go, a number of things have been discovered. So this is really all about innovation within these companies. How do they get to the next level of innovation? And it's, it's no longer, um, we're no longer in a world where you can just trip over discoveries. Um, it takes a lot, a lot of crunching of data in order to get there. And so that's where HPDA is really coming to bear. Um, there is a, a huge number of sensors that are out there in every one of these industries. Um, that sensor data is being collected. A lot of times folks are not 100% sure of exactly what to do with it, but they know that there's value resident in that. And so what we're doing is we're working with them to take that data, move that data into fairly complex um, high performance computing models 
to be digested so that decision support and innovation can come out the other side. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this is the trajectory that these companies will be on in order to be able to hit that next rung of major innovation. So for example, um, again inside of the genomics um, space, we've seen you know, initially when the human genome was mapped, we were looking at you know, a million to millions of dollars to do that. From that point, it's moved into the thousands, and within the next you know, five or less years, we're expecting that to be down in the hundreds for many of these institutions. That means that you know, at some point, in a very short order, every one of us will be able to go to the doctor and have our own genome mapped, right? And have that on file so more personalized medicine can take place. Um, there are a lot of really brave and bold ideas in every one of these industries, and we have an opportunity to work with these customers to help them really harness that. Um, we see the same thing in financial. Um, for example, there's tons of social media data that's being collected. A lot of that social media data, if properly harnessed, can actually predict the direction of markets. We're already starting to see some of that. Um, and so it's, it's this wild and new world that we're <laughs> part of, right? Um, which is incredibly <laughs> exciting. Um, so we're helping some of these you know, uh, major financial institutions to start to make that turn. <laughs> Which name should we buy? <laughs> <laughs> Brand, talk about the um, final question. Talk about the vibe here at the show. What's the conversations you're having? Also the vertical focus, pre-packaging the applications. Big focus for customers around big data. Certainly having high performance right. power behind it makes a lot of sense. What are some of the conversations you're having here at the show? A lot of the conversations that I'm having here at this show, and, in, and likely because this whole um, alliance and this new way of doing things, it, it is fairly new for us. Uh, we're doing a lot of very exploratory conversations. Um, honestly, it's more on the research and development side, um, working with a number of different institutions. So I had um, a theater session yesterday and had a number of folks come up to me uh, from universities as well as from industry. Um, and we were just talking through what some of their various problems are and what they're looking to do trying to bring these elements together. Um, a number of the research institutions really are sort of the harvesting places. It's really where a lot of these ideas come together before making its way into industry. Um, and so we're also working with a number of these institutions. Pretty academic with industry. Exactly, and we believe that that is, um, it, it makes a lot of sense. And, and honestly, the I industry leaders that we work with um, uh, across the board also believe the same thing. And so there are a lot of alliances awesome. that have been formed between these top tier companies and universities, and we're very fortunate to also be part of those environments. And Real quick, what's the structure. bumper sticker for the show this year? Here. The bumper sticker for the show. Well, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is, um, it is not only new and we've kind of re revitalized everything that we're doing um, in this space, uh, but we really are focused on driving to these end-to-end -end solutions. We've got them in a number of ways. Uh, the previous things that I talked to you about in the past were about uh, the IT back end. We're doing more amazing things than ever before in that space. You guys probably heard about Synergy coming to bear as well in the announcement yesterday. Um, and then we're taking that a major step forward in looking at uh, the specific problems that customers have and we're working with them directly to be able to solve some of the hairiest issues in the industry. Brent Allen, Group Manager of Vertical Solutions at HPC and Big Data at HP Enterprise. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing the insight <laughs> here on theCUBE. Vertically focused insight. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more live coverage from London after this short break.